Hey, it's D. It's a brand new episode coming right for you, right on the FTO Network. Enjoy. Hey, yo, hey, yo. D is here for a brand new episode of FTO Podcast. And FTO Podcast is pretty much where we talk about the, the news of the week. Usually it's the news of last week, but you know, news is news. So let's not split hairs. Uh, before I get started on anything, uh, the Supreme Court did overturn uh, Roe versus Wade, which is giving the women the right to choose to have an abortion. That right has now been taken away from them. Um, if you disagree with, uh, the overturning of this, you can kindly stop following my podcast because I'm a big advocate of women rights and women being able to choose whatever they want to do with their bodies. So if you fundamentally disagree with that, uh, this is not a place for you. It just, it's not. So feel free to leave and, you know, do that. But, um, the show will go on. I'm not going to let myself get bogged down with something that uh, a lot of you apparently don't seem to care about. So, uh, Also, the Supreme Court has also overturned uh, or set a precedent that's saying that any anyone can walk out with their guns. You can just, uh, it's the purge, apparently, minus the killing part. You want a gun? You want to live in the old-timey Western days? By all means, walk around with your gun. It's weird. Why would, we, why would we need to do that? Just odd. But it's uh it's law now, so there's that. If you guys don't think like the government's gonna get like a major overhaul real soon, like you are not paying attention. Like it's gonna be a major overhaul. What are what are is for the left or the right? Like the overhaul is happening. So uh let's get on with the news though. I hope you're all doing well, first off. Uh the date is June twenty seventh. Is the date I'm recording this. I don't know why I told you guys the date that I'm recording, but you know what? I feel like it's it's fun to do so. Uh, Batman goes back to Aztec era. You know, he was there before. Uh, in new HBO Max Latin America animated feature called Batman Aztec. So, uh, Chico de Immortios. For all my Latino, Latina listeners, uh, I know I butchered that. And, uh, I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah uh there's no date for when this is coming out they do have a banner um some artwork for this but there's no date about when this is coming out uh it's supposed to have characters like holly quinn inside of it um it's not really saying much if anything about this so but it's cool like we got we got a black batman that's black why not have a a latin batman like hell yeah i'm here for it and this will be, be on HBO Max. And, like, I don't know about you guys, but that's the best place to watch anything DC-related is HBO Max. Like, which which is why I'm very glad, which is why I'm very glad that CW is, take, is taking a step back and away from doing DC properties and giving it to HBO Max. Because if, if it belongs anywhere, like, let's be real with all of us. If it belongs anywhere, it belongs in HBO Max. Because, like, you, you're unfiltered. Like, you can do whatever you want to do. You want to have a guy go full-on the boys on a Batman show? Hey, let's do that. Let's have, like, Professor Pig uh, slice some people up and have Batman come in and stop them. You can do that on HBO Max. This ain't for kids. TVMA. Didn't you see the rating? Come on, little person. Time for you to go. This is uh, for parent time. <laughs> next up, we got the <laughs> next up we got Marvel next uh, Disney Plus show. It's going to be... Wonder Man. If you guys watch my FTO News, Blurred News uh, segment, I talked about this on there. No information is given. No date, no casting, none of it. Like, um, a lot of people have been saying Nathan Fillion should come back and do Wonder Man. Uh, I don't know. I think it's, I think his ship has sailed. Uh, uh, I think his name is Simon? He was like the, the latest Bond villain? Uh, Simon something or other. Uh... Someone said, like, someone said a while back he should probably be Booster Gold. But uh, I think, like, if anyone is is the best person to play Wonder Man, like, he would be probably blonde. Like, we gotta, we gotta move past that. Let's, come on. Let's, uh, let's, 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 let's just move on past, like, him probably not being a brunette. But, uh, I do think if anyone could be 
No, it's Billy Billy Magnesium. That's it. Yeah. Billy Billy Magnesium. That's his name. He, he was Logan Ash in the 007 No Time to Die film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. He would he would make for a great Wonder Man. Like he's hilarious. He has like that that jaw. Uh, I think he will fit the MCU aesthetic. But I do think if they do Wonder Man, even even though they even if they give him a TV show, the only way he'll really take off is if he's a part of the rest of like the the cast. If he's a part of like the rest of like the the ensemble that is the MCU. So whatever the MCU is gonna look like, I know we already got like Captain Marvel. She's still a part of it. We got the Falcon and Winter Soldier. They're they're gonna be like probably somewhere a part of it somewhere, essentially. Um, maybe Ant Man and Wasp still gonna be a part of it, presumably. And like, yeah, you, if you put like She Hulk and you put Miss Marvel, you put uh, like Wonder Man attached to it. Also, you know, that's that's the only way it can really work. If you like put those characters from the TV show and put them in the film, it's the only, only way it can really take off. In my in my personal opinion, uh, Neil Patrick Harris joins Doctor Who as the Doctor's greatest villain. Now, I didn't want to read this article, and I'm still not going to read this article because it's going to give me some spoilers. I can just feel it. So, like, yeah, we already know that uh, uh, Nkaktu Gatwa is going to be the 14th Doctor, and I'm here for it. And uh, we do know, like, the Doctor Who has had, like, a lot of villains in this time. But um, I don't I don't want to give, give away, like, who the villain is possibly going to be. There's a picture posted of it. Like, uh, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, I'm not going like, to spoil it for you. But Neil Patrick Harris is going to be a part of Doctor Who. Like, Doctor Who's getting pretty gay. Like, right on. I'm all for that. Pretty gay in trains, actually. So, like, double check. Check, check. And the Doctor is a black man. It's like, do- triple checks. Put all those checks out there. I'm here for it. Uh, Knives-, <laughs> Knives Out is called Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. So, they're definitely going to be having fun with this sequel. I just hope it just is just as smart as the first one, because I don't know about you guys, but I did not guess who the, who the, the antagonist was in that movie. I just, I didn't. I really didn't. Uh, Sonic Prime has a first look. Uh, Big the Cat and Froggy. It's going to be, I think it's very kid-centric on Netflix. Uh, Pinocchio has a trailer out. The Last of Us has a series teaser out right now. I'll post some of these on my page. So, you know that. Uh, Stray. The game Stray is about a cat. And, like, you pretty much go on journeys as this cat. It looks really interesting. I definitely suggest you check out this trailer. Like, I don't really prop up any games, but this game looks pretty fucking cool. So, that's your one swear to show, by the way. Like, everyone gets one, everyone gets one swear each show, and that's your one swear to show. Uh, Welcome to Dairy. HBO is prequel. Series is officially underway. I'm really, I know I talked about this on the show before. I'm really excited to see how they're going to play this out because we all know Pennywise doesn't die. Unless they put like a time travel thing inside of us or this is Pennywise from a different dimension, we all know Pennywise doesn't die. It says it's a prequel, but things do change. So are the kids going to get away from all this? Is it going to be like a second spider alien? Like who's not Pennywise? Or are they going to be like a second Pennywise? Like how is this going to work out? Because, like, if you if you watch a show like this, and, like, you know, like, the, the antagonist is going to win, like, consequentially, like, how do you keep on going after that? Like, what's what's the finished process when you know what like, the antagonist essentially wants? Do you just watch it for the journey? They have to got, they got to put something else inside of this, like, for us, like, to, to be enticed by this. Like, it's not like, it's not like Prey. It's not like the, the Predator TV show. Cause, like, sometimes those aliens, Predators, they die. So, like, they can, like, Prey, I'm going to take a segue from this and talk about Prey. Prey can have, like, a story that's attached to it that's more of a, hey, this is an alien from a different planet. And, like, they want to go fight these humans, and, like, the humans won. And, like, they just chalk it up to that. And, like, that's that on that. But, like, with Derry, Welcome to Derry, we know Pennywise wins. Like, we know he does. We saw all those kids floating away. And, like, if, like, if, like the kids who did get away... Pennywise, they want them, like, you know, to come back, or wanted them to come back, and they just didn't listen, like, what? Okay. Yeah, I guess it all depends, like, how they start the show. It's going to be, like, a, a, a flashback type thing. It's going to be, like, like uh, the, the kids, like, in this show, meet up with the kids in, the, in like, the original story. I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's, it's definitely giving you something, like, to want to watch it for, to see what they, how they approach it. So, uh, Aladdin director Guy Ritchie teams up with Disney and AGBQ. On live action Hercules. I don't know about this. 
I don't know. I don't know if I want to like a live action Hercules story. I'm just I'm gonna be flat out honest with you guys. Like Disney, it's like been doing like a lot of a lot of whitewashing lately with American Chavez and like uh, Miss Marvel. And like I don't want to see any more whitewashing when it comes like to Hercules. Like you guys can like have any kind of arguments you want to have when it comes to, like the Disney and MCU, and, like the separation between those two. Uh, the fact the fact does remain that like they did whitewash American Chavez and they did whitewash Miss Marvel. Like you know whether you like those shows or not, whether you like those characters or not, and like in like the iteration of both film and comics, like it what was done was done. They, it's no different than what they did with Storm with Storm in like each each X Men story. So be angry, be happy. Like they did what they did, and like let's let's call let's call it what it is. So I don't know. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. Maybe if I just see a good trailer, I'll change my mind. But, you know, for now, I don't know about Hercules. I don't know about Hercules. Uh, across the Spider-Verse cast, Lonely Island, uh, Jerome Tacconi as the iconic Spider-Man villain. I think he's a vulture in this? Yeah. Yeah, he's a vulture. He's like, you know, like one of the Lonely Island guys hanging out with um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine star. Whose name I can't remember right now. Andy Sandberg. <laughs> yeah, one of those guys. He's a funny guy. I've seen him like in stuff like besides like Lonely Island stuff. He's a funny dude. Uh, I don't think he's probably gonna bring comedy to this character. But like having him inside like the across the multiverse as a second villain or a third villain is uh is interesting. And we all already are super hyped about across the spider verse, like to start with, so another story that you may have seen inside my FTO news is Lord of the Rings Ring of Power will have female orcs. Now, again, like, I, I saw some comments about this. Like, I don't really care about female orcs as long, as long as the show's cool. Like, I care about female orcs because, you know, there are orcs. Uh, if you watch the Hobbit film, those orcs were pretty, like, you know, diverse. They were pretty, like, you know, outside of the box. They weren't, like, just, like, like nomad-type creatures. They had, like, like emotions and whatnot. So I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out. But, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with this. It, it may not even be consequential. Like in all honesty, they may not they may not even be consequential to the story. So, me giving my hopes up about this could just be that. Um, Brittany Griner named honorary WNBA All Star in the starter. Congratulations! Uh, it is a shame that she is still detained, and her detainment has been delayed. <sighs> this is a, this is a sad go around, like uh, all because like a war going on, and they don't want like inside like international incidents by like fighting to get her out. It's bogus. It really is. Like this is bogus. Like she should be out of there. And like I had a friend who posted something about like um, men standing up for all these different rights about like like black people having the right like to to exist essentially about uh, like guns being like you know not as prevalent as they are in this country and like now like fighting for women's rights like it's it's a lot for like for all of us like to take on ourselves and uh and she had like the word to like to to thank men for like like putting like the, their best foot forward and like you know doing all of this like and not being tired like in like in taking care of situations like this and then like it makes me think about what uh Charlamagne the God, the host of the, the Breakfast the Breakfast Show podcast, said about uh, the best way to take care of women, and like I still haven't gotten over this. He said this maybe two months ago. He said the best way to take care of women, to take care of black women in particular, is to get mental health. And like I thought that was a slap in the face to all black women. Like what? So the best way I'm not sure if you're talking about in particular for himself or a black man in general is to get mental health to take care of black women. That's the best way to do it, but that is not the best way to take care of black women. That is, that is a cop-out. Wholeheartedly. That's like you not taking accountability for other things you can do because it's like all you think you can do is take care of yourself. And like in the end, that's kind of selfish. So there's many, there's plenty of things you can do to, to help take care of black women. You can speak out about like, like the crimes and like inhumanities that are going on with it. You can donate to causes that like that help prevent those things from happening. You can uh, hire attorneys for like black women or that you think are being falsely accused of certain crimes. Like there's there's tons of different things you can do to help out with black women. Like instead of just like take, getting mental health like care like get out of here. Are you serious? Whatever, man. Uh, author apologizes after Moss Morales store comic book receives backlash. <laughs> I know you guys heard about this. Like, you didn't need to watch my show to hear about that one. <laughs> uh, Merced, I think his last name is, is uh, Mercada, I think it was. He's uh, he's Jewish and Latina. 
and Latino, and uh, he wrote this story about what if Thor was, what if Miles Morales was Thor, and um, it's very, like, black tropey, like, black 2022 tropes is what it was, like, it was full on, like, 2022 black exploitation. it was, it was, it was heinous. Some people say it was cringeworthy. Like, I don't think that word does not suffice for how bad this was. It was, it was awful. Like, bad, bad. And, like, I don't know what he was thinking when he made this story. I don't know what these editors were thinking when they greenlit it to, to go forward. But, yeah, no. Uh, that was, it was weird. Like, weird, weird. Um, what else we got? We got uh, Paramount Plus orders Canadian SkyMed series. From Piazza Entertainment. Now, this, this Sky Med seems like, um, what's that show called? Chicago Med? Or, like, a Chicago PD? Or Chicago Fire? <laughs> it seems like it's in the same realm as that. <laughs> I just, I find it hilarious. Cause, like, cause sh- the Chicago shows, it's, like, in the same guise as, like, Law and Order SVU. Law and Order Criminal Lieutenant. And Law and Order. It's the same. Or, or you know, NCIS, Las Vegas. NC- NCIS, like, New Orleans. Like, it's the same thing as that. It's a... And that's what the Sky Med is. It's going to be Sky Med and, like, Sky Med, um, I don't know, South America, Sky Med, Australia. It's going to be, like, just tons of different Sky Meds all over the place. Like, that's that's how I see this whole thing pan out. And the only reason why I'm talking about it is because, like, it's, like, a very, very diverse cast. I'm not going to write out all, all the names of this cast. Primarily because, like, I'm sitting in my car, as always. Uh, you know what? I got it. I got the cast. Here we go. From top to left of a picture that I'm going to have to use as a disclaimer. When I post this on my page, uh, this is from Deadline, by the way. Uh, Natasha, Natasha Callis, Ace, Nadiwan, Morgan, Hellstorm, Parnit, Akila, Thomas Elms, Mercedes Morris, Keon Clark, Rebecca Kwan, Braden Clark, and Aaron Ashmore. Uh, out of all those names, only one is familiar, and that is uh, Ashmore. I think he was uh, Bobby Drake in the X-Men series. Poorly, mind you. I you think know, he played, like, the strongest, like, Bobby Drake character. And, like, when, and, like I say poorly only because, like, I, I think that script didn't lend himself, like, to make Bobby Drake as complex as he could have been. I think if Bobby was gay, as he is now in the comic books, the story could have been more compelling. I think Ashmore was also in The Boys. Yeah, I think he was in The Boys as well. So, yeah. Uh, I think I got a few more news topics. Um... Data Emmy, Michelle Morgan of The Young and the Restless becomes the first black woman to win an Outstanding Lead Actor or Lead Actress Award. I'm so used to calling, like, women actors, actors, and not actress. But yes, she won a Best Actress, Lead Actress, Outstanding, for Daytime Emmy. It seems like it's, it seems like it took too long for that to happen. So, congrats to her, but like, what the hell? That's a long time coming for that, man ridiculous and lastly on all this news which is i'm really excited to talk about this far right fans of the boys are apparently having a rage meltdown after finally realizing that homelander is a villain how the how did how did you not know that homelander was a villain are you serious i almost said i almost said a swear but as i said before you don't get one swear per show i don't want to get like flagged <laughs> say too many explicit things on there so <laughs> uh yeah homelander is an antagonist like how how did you not realize that? Like he, like he he did so many things that I can't even really talk about on here. Like how did you not realize that he was a bad guy? Like really? Oh, all right. I guess I guess um, I don't have any films to talk about today or games, but I'll talk about comic books from last week, which is Black Adam One, which premiered Black Adam's son, which I'm really excited to see. I really want to see like what he looks like. And, like, how, how he's portrayed in this series. So, there's that. Uh, Dark Crisis, Young Justice 1. Miles Morales, Spider-Man, issue number 39. I heard that the book of things about that. Yo and Nerd talks about this. Like, he highly recommend people checking out this this Miles Morales story. Because uh, it really, like, gets pretty dark with his uh, with his telling. And it brings out the clones, of the, the Miles Morales clones. This really is, like, a Silver Age for Miles Morales. Like I know, like, like that's probably like like maybe jumping a little, little bit too much in comic book world, but like right now, like it's a it's a it's a silver age, not golden age. It's a silver age for Miles Morales. He's been out for probably about close to two decades now, 
I know like, like the usually shelf life for Silver Age is about 30 years between like a character first incarnation, but like this feels like a Silver Age complex right now with uh, the Teen Titans Academy, but Miles Morales doing this thing with like with the Justice League dying, like all this stuff that's happening. It just feels like right now with the big two, this is a very Silver Age thing that's going on. Uh, Nightwing issue number 93, Gunslinger Spawn issue number nine. I'm not sure why I put Spawn on here. I'm so mad at Tom McFarlane. Uh, Marvel Voices. Pride is number one, and Bloodstained Thief is number three. Now, I picked Bloodstained Thief simply because I wanted to read it. As most of you may know, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, indie comics right now. Not that they're bad. Not that they're bad. It's just like, you know, I haven't... <sighs> I haven't had, like, the chance to pull the trigger on, on reading any stuff. Whenever I read any stuff, like, I get so into it, and, like, it stops being interesting then i get angry because i can't keep being a part of it it just it's a whole it's a whole thing man it just is so that is the show 20 minutes not too bad i think it's pretty good good time frame 20 minutes um i hope your days are going all right like uh, i'm not gonna tell you you guys like to have like a good one because like none of us really are but uh, i'm here to give you like you know what i can give you which is mostly entertainment news and like you know just like I got passionate ear, if need be. So I can't. If it's over like a hundred of you, hit me up. As like ask me, like you know, what can I do in a situation like this? Like you know, hey man, need like need somebody to help me out with this. You may have to wait in line because I got a lot of people hitting me up and like and ask me questions like that, which is flabbergasting, but like generous at the same time. Like I'm just like what? People hit me up about like this uh, Roe versus Wade situation, and like it really caught me off guard. It really did. Like, I didn't expect people, like, to hit me up and, like, and being, like, you know, in awe and shock and, like, and wanting some compassion. Like, I just, <clears throat> that, that, that took me for a loop. It just did. It just really did. But, uh, I'm here for all my friends. I'm here for people who need me. Like, I, I just, I try to do what I can. And for those of you who, who still think women should have, have right to control their bodies, like, you can kick rocks, man. Like, take it easy. It was nice knowing you, but I can't be associated with someone who doesn't think a, a person, much like yourself on this planet doesn't have like fully right over their body like that's weird like religious or not that is that is a weird way of thinking and like i cannot be associated with that i can't so uh <clears throat> for the time that i did know you if we were cool it was cool knowing you but you know say la vie say la vie so uh that's the show i don't know what the title is gonna be we'll figure it out <laughs> you guys have a good one until next time you take it easy Hey guys, D here of FTL Nerd Talk. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about FTL Nerd Talk. Got a lot of different shows for all of you. Make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode. Take it easy.